Uh, Dax, we will kick it up, uh, kick it off with you. And uh, your your thoughts? How is the team preparing for the game on Saturday? Yeah, uh, very exciting times for the club. Obviously, um, you know, getting through another preseason, um, one where uh, you know it felt a little bit choppy in terms of not getting as many games as we wanted to, um, but ultimately. Uh, good competition, um, a lot of familiarity with the guys that have come back, uh, obviously trying to improve on how we did last year. Um, very important for us to get off to a good start, a very front loaded home schedule. Uh, obviously a big goal of ours is to get into the open cup. And so being at home, um, you know, we feel, uh, that it's incumbent upon us to, to make sure that we're, we're ready to come out and, uh, be in the top eight in order to, to qualify for the Open Cup, as well as just get the season off on the right foot by winning our first couple games. Thank you, Dax. Dan, an amazing season in 2020 for the club uh, defensively. How, um, how is the, that defensive line anchoring ahead of 2022, and how are you feeling uh, ahead of it? Uh, pretty good. You know, I think the, the most important thing in you know, something that we all value is continuity and getting to log a lot of minutes with, you know, familiar faces in certain positions on the field. So um, I think with returning the back line and obviously Joe Willis and uh, the majority of our defensive unit in front of us as well, it, it just makes our lives a lot easier. And we have a great sort of volume of work to look back on last year and to understand things that we did well and what gave us success, but more importantly, what we can sort of tweak as we, as Dax mentioned, look towards a, you know, a slate and a schedule that gives us every opportunity to be aggressive and get on the front foot in an environment that we're used to at home. It should be very exciting and to leverage that into getting points early on and to come out of the gates pretty hot. So that's, that's the group's mindset. And from a defensive standpoint, we, um, you know, we want to replicate what we're able to be good at. We don't think that that was really the ceiling for us defensively. I think we could still look at a lot of our performances and think we could have done a lot better. So it's just learning, learning from the coaching staff, what they want to do, learning the guys you're playing with, what makes them comfortable and becoming more efficient and effective. So all that good stuff is happening throughout preseason as Dax mentioned, um, and we're just ready to get started. Thank you, Dan. We will keep uh, kick off the questions uh, with uh, Chris Harris from NBC4. And a reminder to everybody, please alert me through the chat if you have questions. Um, Chris? Hi there. This question is for Dax. Dax, just how excited are you, A, for just a season opener to begin this thing? And B, you know, we remember what the atmosphere obviously was like last year, and it won't be quite the same, but we did see today that, you know, there could be 40% capacity in that stadium this time. So the energy will be there, although it may not be exactly the same. Just kind of your thoughts on kicking that all off. Yeah, it's fantastic news, uh, especially for us starting the season at home. Um, you know, if we look back to last year, uh, our first home game of the season against Atlanta, uh, the energy and the electricity in the stadium was unbelievable. And it was something that I still remember to this day as one of the, the better experiences and the better atmospheres that I've ever played in. So we know that our fans are, are extremely excited to get back into the stadium, uh, even in the playoffs against Miami. Um, with the limited number of, of people that were in there, you still felt their presence. You still felt, felt their energy. Uh, and, and we have to use that. We have to feed off of that crowd. Um, I think it, it puts a little bit more pressure on us to perform at a high level. Uh, because I think our fans expect us to play at a high level, but I think that's a good thing. I think a little bit of internal pressure is, is always a, a positive thing if you can harness that in the right way. So we're excited to play in front of people again. Um, we hope that our fans are excited to get back there. And obviously uh, an important game against a team that we didn't get a chance to play last year, but a team that's very close to us in proximity in FC Cincinnati. Uh, I think a team that th by no secret has struggled the last couple of years, but uh, by all accounts has gotten much better than they were the last two years, <clears throat> excuse me, has gotten much better than they were the last two years. And so I think it's going to be a great way for us to kick off the 2021 season and, and hopefully kick off a, an exciting rivalry down the road. Ben Wright with the next question also for you, Dax. 
Yeah, Dax, this is similar to um, to Chris's question just a minute ago, but uh, earlier today, actually, Jamie Watson mentioned that you, you told him that apparently you can hear at times the commentator, commentators on the field. Um, and I was just wondering if you, uh, just if you could talk a little bit about maybe the struggles of playing uh, just in an empty stadium and, and, and how that works um, as opposed to playing in a full stadium. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not, it's not ideal. Um, it's almost, uh, it's almost got more of a preseason feel to it. And to be honest, soccer without fans is nothing. It, it means nothing. Um, obviously last year was hard on everyone, but the fans are, are what make winning so special. Uh, if you can't do that with them, then you feel a little bit empty inside because those are the people who, you know, they, they support the club through thick and thin, give you their blood, sweat and tears and, uh, that's why you play the game. So, yeah, it was it was eerie at times last year, um, you know, playing in a 60, 70,000 seat stadium and, and being able to hear uh, the commentators, being able to hear the opposing coaches <clears throat> giving tactics to their team, uh, you know, being able to hear little conversations on the side going on that, you know, you normally wouldn't hear when you have a full stadium. So, uh I'm hoping uh, that for not just for the U S but for the whole world, we're, we're starting to <clears throat> move in a positive direction past this pandemic uh, where we can do it safely. Um, and just getting fans back into the stadium is going to be a big boost. I think for everyone on the field. Kim, do you have a question? Is that you telling me something? <laughs> Yes, no. Yeah, there you go. Team, go ahead. <laughs> hey, this question's for Dan. Sorry, I'm in the car and I just had a baby vomit all over me, so that's why I was a little late. Um, Dan, when you look at a team like Cincinnati, that's, that their attack has to be so different this year than it was last year if they want to find any success. How do you prepare for them not knowing, uh, you know, based on film, what they're able to do? Yeah, it's a good question. Um, you know, obviously our process normally entails a lot of thorough and rigorous scouting on the other team. And for a team like you mentioned, Cincinnati, that's had a lot of turnover, especially in attacking positions. Um, it's difficult to kind of know what you're going to go up against, but to kind of tie it back into not to, to blow off us looking at them, I think something that we're sort of trying to create as in terms of a culture and an idea as we attack this first slate of games is can we really focus on ourselves and be the ones that are the aggressors in the game to the point where the other team is reacting to us, whether that's defensively, offensively. Um, we think that if we can perfect both sides of the ball and be aggressive and be on the front foot um, and just play an exciting brand of soccer, that's going to create points and a great atmosphere at home. Um, that, that'll sort of help us out a lot, especially in these games where you don't know exactly what could be coming towards you in the form of opposition or attacking talent that's new to the league, whatever it may be. But as you know, the way the schedule's lined up, we're going to be seeing a lot of these teams multiple times throughout the year. So that first game and that first exposure to each team will certainly be interesting and something that we'll have to go in, you know, ready to react and respond and adapt, whatever that may be or look like on the night. But you know, more than anything, just going out and worrying about ourselves and being the best version of ourselves and aggressive, like I said, um, I think that sort of helps us out a lot when we don't know exactly what to expect on the other side of the field. We will remain with you then uh, with a question from Ben Wright. Yeah, Dan, um, we, we talked with Alistair Johnston yesterday, and he was just, um, he said that you two have been talking a little bit this offseason about how you, you feel like you have a really strong defensive base, um, but how maybe both of you, but he especially wants to kind of work on on being more of a part of the attack and, and contributing more in the final third. Could you could you talk a little bit about that and kind of what your goals are in that area for the 2021 season? Yeah, for sure. I think it's it's relatively straightforward. I think Alistair and myself are two guys that should be getting involved more often and more consistently in a positive way in the offensive side of the field to help change the game. Simple as that. Um, I think not to turn a blind eye or to take for granted the defensive success that we've had, but I, like I talk about a lot is not every team has the, you know, the security and the luxury of having guys like Dave Romney and Walker and having guys like Godoy and Dax in the middle of the field that are experienced and know how to put out fires. So that really gives us a platform to be much more aggressive. And in the modern game, that's what's expected of fullback to get up 
provide service, create different angles of attack, different dynamics going forward that takes the the pressure off of the wingers all the time and our attacking players to be operating, you know, independently as their own unit, as a front four and a back six. We don't really like that. We want to get guys involved more consistently in different ways and show different looks of, frankly, putting the ball in the back of the net. And I think Alistair shares my desire in improving every day and making sure that we can become a more integral part of what we do on the offensive side of the ball. And he's shown a great appetite for learning and trying to get up the field and create, you know, good positions for us and to deliver and to deliver in those positions. So something that he and I certainly have connected on and are looking forward to, you know, getting able to replicate in the real game and to do it consistently week to week and to help the team win. We have one more question for you then this time from Chris Harris uh, with NBC4. Again, I was just wondering, coming off of last year's success, uh, if you kind of speak to the expectations that you guys may have for yourselves this year, especially starting off. Yeah, I mean, it's it's pretty, you know, it's always something you have to keep an eye on. And we all talked about at the end of last year as a group that, you know, this past year and the success we had in our first year as an expansion team was great. And we're able to hang our hat on a lot of important elements of what made us so good. But by no means does that, you know, something that we can take for granted going into 2021 and how things are going to shape up. We have a new team, although we have a lot of continuity, we have a lot of additions. Teams all over the league are changing. It's a new year. We're going to see what happens with the pandemic. All that stuff um, just goes to say that we are very much um, aware of the fact that this is a whole different animal and that we need to adapt and create a better version of ourselves um, to compete this year. And we think that early on, it looks like we're going to have a great opportunity to jump out of the gates and to be really aggressive and to work on a lot of those things that I think that we can sort of tighten the gears on and turn it up a notch, frankly, in our game and how we compete. So to have these opportunities on the early end of the season to do it in a familiar environment where there's a lot of energy and excitement in the stadium um, is great. And it's something we need to capitalize on. But we are very aware that, you know, we're proud of last year. We, we, don't, we don't believe that that really counts for much right now. Everyone's starting at the same point and we need to go about our business in a way that will keep us in the same conversation. Um, to keep us in a position where we want to be. Our season ended short, according to us, last year. So we want to make sure we can right that wrong and continue to push towards a championship. Trey Hills with the Tennessean with a question for the two of you. Yeah, sure. I would love to start with Dex and then I'll go back to Dan because um, I know Dan's been uh, answering a lot of questions lately. I wanted to ask, of course, this season, the group's established. All you guys have been able to take a year to become a solid team after last year where everyone was new. Um, but this year, of course, there's still been some additions and you guys have been able to play, of course, I'm sure in scrimmages and things like that to get used to some of these guys. So um, Dax, for you getting a chance to see whether it's, you know, back with CJ again, um, of course, Jandra's back into this fold, but also Rodrigo Pinheiro's new, um, and uh, as well as some of the younger guys, Castellanos and Nick Hines, um, Dex, what's your understanding of those guys and your assessment as they've gotten more acclimated into the team? Um, what's your thoughts on how they've gotten used to being a part of the group? Yeah, <clears throat> I think that ultimately it just adds to our quality and to our depth. Uh, when you can bring in a guy like CJ Sapong, for example, who is a proven winner in MLS, uh, he's won an MLS Cup, potentially an Open Cup too, I'm not quite sure, but he's also scored upwards of 60, 70 goals in the league. Um, and, and I still think he's at a really good age to be able to contribute. Um, you know, that's a, that's a fantastic signing for us. It challenges the players that we already have on the roster um, while also, you know, providing us lots of depth. Uh, because I think we saw last year, we had a, we had a pretty significant injury crisis uh, that happened to us up front, And you can't, it's impossible to prepare for those things. I think at one point we had like six or seven of our, our top eight attackers probably not fit and not healthy. And so I don't think we're going to run into the same situation this year. Um, I think all those guys that you mentioned um, are going to add something unique to our team. I think in certain cases with maybe some of the younger guys, it's going to take them a little bit longer to, to get up to speed. In the case of Rodrigo Pinero, you can see the quality that he has. You can see that he brings a little bit something different to the table uh, to our team. Um, you know, he's electric in terms of his pace and his quickness and his shiftiness. Uh, but he, we also have to remember he's adjusting to a new country uh, and, and that's never easy. So 
I know that the coaching staff is really high on him, but they're also going to give, be patient with him and give him time to adapt with, with uh, Castellanos and, and Nick Hines guys that you can see are, are going to be provide valuable competition and training, but also guys that I think the coaches will be able to trust to put on the field um, and, and guys that are going to continue to push us to be even better. So these are things that you need in order to build a sustainable and winning roster, not just this year, but in the future as well. Uh, I, I think all those guys are, are good additions to the locker room. It's important for them to be, to be good people and, and guys that add their own unique personality to the team. And I, I think they've done that so far. So we'll see what happens once the games get started. We'll see how the coaching staff decides to rotate and decides to parse out minutes uh, because I think we know that uh, once we get into the meat, of our, our schedule, it's, it's, it's going to be, it's going to test our depth and I'm sure all those guys are going to contribute in some way. Yeah. Especially for you, Dan, have you been able to go up against Rodrigo and what's your meaning in scrimmages, of course, like what's your assessment on how he's kind of got on since he joined the group? Yeah, it's been, you know, frankly, a pleasure to, to play against him and to see what he's willing to do. And, you know, the one thing I will say in regards to what Dax was saying about all these different guys is, I think both of us have played on a lot of teams before where you just end up with players that come by one way or another um, onto the team. And there isn't a ton of thought put into it, just that they were available and that sort of thing where here it's a whole different dynamic in terms of, you know, the front office and Gary and the staff being very methodical about who they bring in. They have to cover a lot of different bases that, you know, you're showing up and you have a guy that's a winger that's running like a madman on the defensive side of the ball, which is sort of our DNA. So to see a guy like that just working hard from day one and how fast and athletic he is it's 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 really nice you don't always get that it's hard to find guys that come in and don't have fear and they they're just throwing themselves at whatever task it may be right away but that's not to say the task that's being done is perfect and that's an ongoing sort of process with Gary to get to a point where there's enough trust um, mutual trust that they understand the position that they're trying to play and what that role sort of represents for our team and how we like to play and compete and once that becomes the case as Dax says it's just a manage it's just a matter of managing minutes and trying to find opportunities for these guys to to get acclimated and play valuable minutes not throwaway minutes but games where we need points and these guys are the ones out there doing it for us so Rodrigo's one of many that we think are going to be a critical element to what we do especially offensively this year and to create more than anything like Dax said camp competition which is huge and it, it just drives everyone forward and we struggled a bit with that last year for sure. Um, and it's nice to know that we have a lot of guys that think that, uh, you know, they're deserving of minutes and they have the quality to do it and they're willing to work for it. So it helps the group in general. Thank you, Dan. And we will conclude today's availability with a question for you, Dax, from Team Sullivan. Yeah, Dax, obviously you guys go out wanting to, to win and get points in every game, but knowing that these first three games have added stakes of qualifying for the U.S. Open Cup, does that change the way you mentally approach it or, or kind of the stakes that you put into these first three games? Yeah, I, I think that it does. I, do, I think it does change things a little bit. Um, you know, usually the beginning of the season, every team wants to start out on the right, the right foot. Uh, you want to have positive momentum heading into the season. You want to start, <clears throat> start out getting that first win out of the way. It's always the most difficult one to come by. Now that we know that there's, something on the line, uh, something to play for, and a, a competition that means a lot to me personally, but also I think our club, uh, you know, that, that amps up the intensity even more in terms of what we're going to bring to the game. Gary spent about 20 minutes today uh, after our video session uh, basically discussing how important these first three games are, uh, you know, because of how important the U.S. Open Cup is to our team and to our group. So we want to be a team that's fighting for trophies. Uh, we want to be a team that's talked about and in the picture for you know being an elite team in MLS and the only way you do that is to continually fight for every trophy on every front and so you, you can't fight for the U.S. Open Cup if you're not a part of the competition so it's exciting there's a we're looking at it like a little you know maybe a little three game <clears throat> group stage tournament where you know we need to accumulate as many points as possible and the fact that every game is at home is is crucial in terms of, of how aggressive we're going to be in terms of going after this thing so really important. Uh, we want to get off on the right foot. Uh, and we know that it's in our hands. If, if we play as well as we did last year at home, uh, you know, we really like our chances to qualify for the open cup and, and come out of the gates hot.